Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the gas valve at the wall. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the LG dryer gas burner valve assembly. It's going to be a very easy repair and it only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new gas burner valve assembly. The gas burner valve assembly is what supplies gas to the dryer burner. The main reason to be changing it out is if the valve has failed and you're not getting any gas or heat, or it's leaking and you smell gas. In order to install this part, we have to open up the gas system. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, please call a technician. First thing we have to do in order to get to the part is take off the top of the dryer. We're going to go around back and use our Phillips screwdriver to take the screws out. Now that we have the screws out, we can grab the top panel and pull it back about an inch and a half. There's four tabs that it locks onto. You have to pull it back and then lift it off the tabs. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. With the top out of the way, we can start to take the control panel off. We're going to disconnect all these wire harnesses so we can take this off and set it aside. They all have locking tabs on them. All you have to do is press the release tab and pull them off. Once you have all the wires off, then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws that holds the console on. Now that we have the screws out, there's a few locking tabs across the top that you have to kind of lift up on and then pull out on the control panel to take it off the frame. Once you have it released, you can lift it off and set it aside. Now that we have the control panel out of the way, we can disconnect the door switch wiring harness. It's located right in the center of the console. All you have to do is reach in and pull the wiring harness off. Once you have it disconnected, we can open up the dryer door. and We have to remove the two screws located down at about 6 o'clock that hold the front panel to the windscreen housing. Once you have the screws out, you can close the dryer door and then we can remove the four screws that hold the top of the panel on. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver and remove these four screws. Once you have the four screws out, you can lean the panel forward. There's two mounting tabs on the bottom that we have to lift it off. Once you have it off, you can set the front panel aside. With the front panel out of the way, we're going to remove this silver brace that goes across the front. First thing we're going to do is remove the light bulb socket wiring harness. There's a black wire on the front and a gray one on the back. All you have to do is pull it off and get it out of the way. On the back side, we have to remove these wire harness holders. All you have to do is twist these to release them, and then we can take the wire harnesses out. Once you have the wire harnesses removed, we can remove the four screws that hold the bracket on. Once you have the screws out, you can lift the panel up. There's a tab on each end that you have to release. And once you have it off, you can set it aside. Before we take the bulkhead off the dryer, we have to disconnect the wire harness that goes to the moisture sensor. All you have to do is reach down and grab it, and press on the release, and separate it. Once you have it released, we can take the bulkhead off. To get the bulkhead off, we're going to remove these four screws. Once you have those out, we can lift the bulkhead off the dryer. To 
get the bulkhead off, we have to lift these four tabs out of the frame and pull it off the dryer. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the bulkhead off, we can take the belt off the pulleys. We're going to reach in and grab the idler pulley with our left hand and pull it towards the left side of the dryer. That's going to put some slack in the belt so we can take it off the pulleys. Now we can take the dryer drum out. We're going to use the belt to lift it up and guide it out of the dryer. Now that we have the drum out of the way, we have access to the gas burner valve. It's down here in the right hand corner. First thing we're going to do is take off the wire harnesses. We're going to take off the one on the bottom solenoid. It's red with pink wire. And then we can take off the upper one. It's red and white wires. Once you have the wires off, you can get the wire harnesses out of the way. And then we can use a Phillips screwdriver. We're going to remove the two screws that hold on the gas line to the valve. These are going to be kind of tight, so when you're taking these off, all these screws on the gas valve, you want to make sure that you don't strip the screw out. Now that we have those two screws out, we can carefully take the gas line off and set it aside. Now we can take out the two screws that hold the gas valve to the bracket. Now we can take out the bottom screw. We're going to use a short little stubby Phillips screwdriver to take that one out. Now that we have all the screws out, we can take the gas burner valve out of the dryer. To lift the valve out, all you have to do is guide the orifice out of the holder and pull the valve out of the dryer. Here's the old gas burner valve assembly next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. We do have to change over the orifice from the old valve to the new one, so we're going to grab a 10 millimeter wrench and take the orifice off. Once you have it loose, you can just unscrew it with your hand. To put it on the new valve, we have to take off this shipping tape that they put on here to keep any dirt from getting into the valve. Once you have that off, we can put the orifice in and tighten it down. Once you have the orifice tightened down, we can remove the tape that covers up the hole where the gas line goes. Once you have the tape off, you want to be careful you don't get anything in there. Once you have the valve ready, we can put it in the dryer. To put the new gas burner valve in, we're just going to move the supply line out of the way a little bit so we can slide the orifice up into the holder and line up the screw holes so we can mount it to the plate. We're going to use the Phillips screwdriver and put the screw in through the bottom first. Once you have the bottom screw mounted, we can put the upper two on to hold it in place. Once you have the valve mounted to the bracket, then we can lift up the supply tube and put it into the burner valve. Once you have the gas line into the valve, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in to hold it in place. Once you have this side tightened down, you can come back and tighten this side down. Sometimes once you do one side, the other side loosens up a little bit. You want to make sure you get them nice and tight so you don't have any leaks. Once you have them tightened down, we can reconnect the wiring harnesses. We're going to put the top one on first. Remember that was the red and white with the 
double red to the front of the dryer. And then we put the bottom one on. It was pink and red with pink on the bottom. Now that we have the gas burner valve assembly installed, we can real quick turn the gas on and then you want to spray the valve area with some soapy water to make sure you don't have any gas leaks. Once you're sure that you don't, you can turn the gas off and then we can put the dryer back together. Now we can put the drum back in the dryer. We're going to use the belt to lift it up and guide it back into place. We're going to go through the cutouts and make sure that the rear of the drum sits on the rollers. Once you have it in place, you want to make sure that the belt is lined up on the wear mark where it is supposed to be and that the grooves are against the drum. Now that we have the drum back in place, we're going to reach in again with our left hand and grab the idler pulley and pull it over to the left so we can grab the belt and route it around the pulleys. Now we can put the bulkhead in. We're going to set it down so that the blower seal is lined up with the blower and then we're going to have to lift it up so that the rollers go underneath the drum and you may have to lift the drum up so the rollers will go underneath. Once you have the rollers underneath the drum, then we can put the bulkhead in place and lock the tabs into the cabinet. Now that we have the bulkhead mounted, we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to put the four screws in. We can reconnect the wire harness for the moisture sensor. All you have to do is grab the other end and plug it in, make sure it locks so you get a good connection. Once you have that connected, then we can go up top and reconnect the light bulb wiring harness. We want to grab the wire connector for the light bulb socket. Remember the gray wire was on the inside and the black was on the outside. All you have to do is plug it in to get a good connection. Now we can put the support bracket on. Remember there's a little tab right here that goes into this cutout. So all you have to do is lift it up and lock that in. Once you have both ends in, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Now that we have this support panel back on, we're going to rerun these wires. This is the door switch wiring harness. We want to make sure it goes down behind this little bump right here and run it out to the front so it's ready to plug the door switch into. Once you have the door switch plug in the front of the dryer, we can push the wiring harness into these clips. You want to make sure they lock in there. Next we can put the front panel on the dryer. You want to carefully lift it up and set it onto the mounting tabs. And then we can lift it up. You want to go all the way up. We have to stop and plug in the door switch. It can only go on one way. There's a locking tab. All you have to do is press it in, make sure you get a good connection. Once you have it connected, we can push the panel up the rest of the way and use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Now that we have the front panel secure, we can open up the dryer door and put in the two screws that hold the front panel to the lint screen housing. Once you have the screws in, you can close the dryer door. When you're putting the control panel in, there's four tabs on the control panel that go into the cutouts on the front panel. So you need to line those up and then rotate the front panel up into position. Once you have the tabs in the front in, we're going to come around back and make sure that the tabs come through the back panel and snap it into place. Once you have it in, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. With the control panel mounted, we're going to reconnect all the wire harnesses to the control board. They're all color coded, so we're just going to start over here on this side and work our way over. 
All you have to do is press them in. They all have locking tabs on, so make sure they lock in. Once you have all the wire harnesses hooked up, we can put the top back on the dryer. To put the top of the dryer back on, there's four of these locking tabs, one in each corner. You have to make sure that when you set the top down, it's in this wide part, and then you push it back and lock it into here. Once you have it locked in, you can put the screws in. Now that we have the top locked back down, we can put the screws in to hold it in place. Now that you have the dryer put back together, we can plug it back in, turn the gas back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.